When my wife Shandri and I were young and it was just us against the world, we traveled overseas as much as our meager incomes allowed, exploring the planet in short, controlled bursts. There, Germany, England, Japan, represented our freedom and individuality, while here, where our parents and history lived, reminded us that we weren't as cool or unique as we wanted to be. In 2001, we went to Rotenburg, Germany, an old walled city that had been spared the ravages of World War II. Our room was on the top floor of a quaint bed and breakfast styled hotel, looking out over ancient Bavarian cobblestone streets, brown by design and age. The air was cool and the bed was soft. And when we finally settled in and took a breath, we embraced each other and made love with the windows open. But all was not chocolate and bratwurst. <laughs> Shandri, <laughs> I like that, was determined to get a nice souvenir for her mom. We separated to do some shopping. I went in search of local snacks called snowballs that turned out to be only uh, a fourth as delicious as the guidebooks would have you believe. When we met up again, she had a giant bag under her arm. My wife had purchased a pair of enormous 18 inch tall dolls in two foot long boxes, <laughs> a boy and a girl dressed in traditional Bavarian clothing. <laughs> it seems petty now, but then when I counted every penny and every second as mine to manage as I saw fit, I took it like an asshole <laughs> and accused her of not taking into account that we were traveling by foot and train rather than car. We already had two large bags each, and now we had to make room for Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> what were you thinking? How are we supposed to lug these on to around on top of everything else? And how much did they cost? I thought we were trying to save money. My argument was flawless. <laughs> I was thinking I'd get something that my mom would really like, and... When I saw these, I was thinking how happy she'd be. My argument was shit. <laughs> the paper bag the dolls came in was falling apart. We spent the rest of the afternoon shopping silently for a large duffel bag to put the dolls in and sling over my shoulder. My feelings of freedom and unity of us against the world bound by just the love we had for one another was being torn down by two giant toys shaped like babies. <laughs> but really, it was all me. I grunted and made a spectacle of myself whenever I had to maneuver the dolls down the street or into a luggage hold. I tried to be as conspicuous as possible. Every movement I made, like a pantomime of hard labor. Look at me! Look what my wife is making me do! <laughs> but I was young and strong, and they weren't really that heavy. Shandri just watched. I imagine she laughed to herself at my foolishness. She never ridiculed me or treated me as poorly as I treated her, and eventually I did what a lot of guys do. I pretended there was never a problem. <laughs> By our last evening in Germany, the dolls had become such an important part of our trip, I took pictures with them <laughs> under my arm <laughs> like they were our children. Plastic, <laughs> creepy children. <laughs> that night we got sandwiches at a little Turkish deli. Since it was getting late on a Sunday, most other places were closing. Shandri is a vegetarian, but they had run out of cheese, so they loaded her sandwich up with onions because I guess cheese white, onions also white. We took the food back to our plush Cold War chic hotel room, and after stashing Hansel and Gretel so as not to kill the mood, we made love again one last time on foreign soil, like hot American spies. <laughs> it was so good that to this day we call it the onion sandwich night. <laughs> I wrestled with how I could turn a bitter fight on vacation into such a fond memory. Well, if someone doesn't let me merge on my way to work, I want to punch their mama in the mouth. <laughs> Why did the things that happened here 
day to day make me want to escape while I was able to glorify the things that happened there as great life experiences. When I was in Oxford, England, I spent over an hour writing a journal entry in the Eagle and Child pub where Tolkien and C.S. Lewis had spent their evenings as a writing group, the Inklings. The journal entry was all about how stoked I was to be writing a journal entry in the pub where Tolkien and C.S. Lewis met with their writing group. At the time, I'd never felt this, that same enthusiasm about anything here in my hometown. But that is changing. My two and a half year, so, year old son, Yusuf, he's, uh, he re ooh, he's obsessed with trash trucks. Because of his love, I've memorized the routes through our neighborhood. I know which driver will wave and which one won't. He dressed as a trash truck for Halloween and I went as the driver. <laughs> Wednesday is trash truck day, and while I got ready for work, Shandri is uh, getting ready to run outside with the boy at the first hiss of hydraulic brakes or squeal of mechanical arms, which the boy can hear a block away. I discovered the Garbage Truck YouTube channel. It got millions of views, and I was stoked when username former WM driver put up a new video a couple weeks ago. Did you know that the giant can on the back of a garbage truck is called a hopper? You do now. <laughs> we always bring Rowdy a little green trash truck from a cartoon with us when we go out for pancakes. Wherever we go, the boy has his eye out for trash trucks, as well as their lesson cous lesser cousins, fire trucks, ambulances, and taxi cars. We took the boy to his first Comic-Con, a great place to watch buses and trolleys, by the way when he was eight weeks old because there was no way we were gonna waste the tickets we'd bought a year earlier. <laughs> Theoretically, we knew there would have to be some sacrifices. Practically, we had no real idea how hard it would be. We planned to take turns with him, allowing each other to go see some stuff on our own. I took him first on preview night while Shandri roamed the floor with her sister. I strapped him to my chest and deftly maneuvered through crowds of conventioneers while he slept. He was a little furnace and my spine got sore while I leaned over back issue bins looking for old G.I. Joe trade paperbacks. Some people looked at me sideways and I tried my best to stay out of their way. Nothing to see here, folks, totally normal. Disregard the man behind the Bechdel baby carrier. <laughs> Some folks, folks cooed over him and told me how beautiful he was. A guy selling hiss tanks gave me a discount on my whole purchase after we chatted about kids. He encouraged me to enjoy the now. He said I'd miss the times he was small enough to carry on my chest. His young daughter was with him in the booth, six or seven. She seemed nice enough, but disinterested in anything other than her Game Boy. Later, the Doug Tendipole reached his long arm, uh, arm out of his booth and rested his hand gently on the boy's back. Is he your first? Yeah, so far, I said. <laughs> I have four boys of my own, he said. He looked at the boy with a glint of nostalgia. They are great at this age. I hope you guys have fun. Now I buy every book the guy puts out. <laughs> Over the rest of the weekend, I didn't have to keep the boy with me as long as that first night because uh, he had to eat regularly and I got nothing. <laughs> For the most part, Shandri kept him with uh, her while I wandered the con with my friends. But on Saturday, she wanted to go to a Powerpuff Girls panel that directly conflicted with my He-Man panel plans. <laughs> Look. <sighs> Here's the thing, Shandri. Comic-Con was mine well before it was ours. I had to convince you that it wasn't just a bunch of t sweaty dudes arguing about if Deadpool could beat up Batman in a fight. I practically dragged you here that first time two years ago, and now you want to ruin my fun by making me carry the baby? As happy as I am to have trained you to be a nerd, I'm not happy I have to untrain you now. Why can't you just be content to be the mom and wife you're supposed to be? Haven't I compromised enough? Why is everything I value as my own now supposed to belong to everyone else in my life? Yeah, I thought about saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I might have said if I was the same kid I was there in Rotenburg, probably more tactfully, 
maybe more convincingly. Instead, I strapped my beautiful son to my chest and said, smiling, that I'd find something else to enjoy. And I already had. Nasaloa. <laughs> <laughs>